Hi everyone, Eileen here. It's good to be back. And uh, this weekend I'm starting off again with my Lavinia Stamps video tutorials, one today, one tomorrow, from me to you. And this is the uh, card that I'm making today, this morning for you. The Body of the Moth, which is Indra, beautiful moth from Lavinia Stamps. Um, looks a bit blue because I've used uh, some of these uh, Nuvo Crystal Glaze drops and it hasn't dried yet. So, um, and that's why there isn't a photograph of my project on Facebook yet. And because I'm waiting for it to dry, then I'll take a picture and pop it up. So that's why it looks a bit blue. More of that later. I'm featuring one of the brand new stencils from Lavinia. These are 8x8 eight eight. and this one is called Charming, I think. No, Splendor. This is Splendor. And you will notice there's no frame, so I haven't had to get the scissors out. <laughs> I love using my stencils on a gel press and the frame makes it a bit awkward sometimes. So to have stencils without the frame is just a huge bonus if you love your gel press. You'll notice it looks a bit pink because I'm using pigment ink on it. It doesn't do any harm to the stencil and it, will and it won't alter the performance of the stencil in any way. <clears throat> but this pigment ink won't wash off. It's an archival ink and uh, I've used Rose Madder but it, it won't alter the performance in any way of the stencil. And it's a pretty colour anyway. So, let's get going. And I'll show you how I made this. I found that this pink rose madder from uh, Archival Ink, Ranger Archival, um, looked really good against the cream shade of multifarious cardstock from Lavinia Stamps. It looks gentle and and I felt that it was such a lovely tone that um, I carried on using this and not the white. This card or the topper that I'm using is um, 16 centimetres length by 9 centimetres in width and then I mounted it onto at the same size card blank to finish it off. Started off with the cream cardstock onto a magnetic sheet that it is self adhesive down to a self healing mat. And I've used magnets along with the stencil to hold it. Now I'm just positioning the stencil about just over half an inch up from the bottom, maybe a little more, say, say an inch inch up from the bottom yeah about that and then just popping these magnets down these magnets are from my misty so any stamping platform you've got they might come in handy but also i'm going to use some tape sweet poppy stencil low tack tape because <clears throat> i really don't want this stencil to move I'm just going to pop that down there. Make sure you don't cover your work with it, as I nearly did. So just on the outside of the stencil. Like so. And then I'm going to pop a bit down here too. Right. Fingers crossed that won't move. Now this Rose Madder is a lovely colour um, and the ink pad isn't, isn't new. It's quite an old ink pad, so it's quite dry. So I don't have to take too much off. If you're using a new pad, be careful. You don't want the ink to be overpowering. So holding it down, starting in the middle, very relaxed wrist, no pressure, just round and round in a circular motion, coming up a bit, but not right to the top. Bit more you see and I'm not even bothering to take this color off because I know this ink pad is quite dry just giving it all over holding it carefully 
Now I'm putting more pressure on now because I want that pattern at the bottom of the stencil to be quite strong so you can really see it. And I'm coming down, not right to the end, but close. And I've covered the sides and I'm sort of aiming for a faded out look at the bottom. So it's quite strong from the bottom of the stencil and then fading out as it goes down. Let's have a look. Yeah, that's good. Okay. So then swing it round. Pop the stencil back on. Now, because this isn't a dye-based ink, it more or less dries instantly. As I've said, it will stain your stencil. If you're using dye-based ink, you might need to wash and dry the stencil off before you reapply it back to your work. So I'm popping it down and again, about an inch up from the bottom. But what I want to do is to try and line it up with the images that are already there. So let's find that one. Yeah, let's find that. So try and position it if you can, like so. You don't have to be too careful, but if you can line it up, that would be a bonus. Pop those on, like so. And then I'm not going to go into the middle of the stencil because it will look like double vision. I'm just coming down now from this bottom area again. I'm just concentrating on the pattern down here. And again, getting that fade out look at the bottom. That's not bad. That's not bad at all. Right, moving all this out of the way. Oh, I bent my cardstock there a little. Never mind. So now I need to decide on which bit is going. So I think I'm going to put... I've got a, a little bit um, there. It looks a bit blurred with the stencil where I didn't position it properly but the rest of it because I stayed away from inking anywhere else that's where the original pattern was so that's fine and that's quite um, in focus and clear the beautiful Indra moth I've got a large stamp mat underneath my work foam stamp mat and this beautiful moth and Versafine Black Ink, Onyx Black, you can use Versafine Clear Nocta, no problem. And you can use a stamp press if you want. I'm going to go with this Good Inking. And it's this ink pad was re-inked last night, ready for this tutorial I don't flood my ink pads when I re-ink them but I do re-ink them um, frequently I'm just getting a bit of kitchen towel good to be back Thank you for all the lovely messages I've had. <laughs> Seems some of you miss me. <laughs> I certainly missed you. I miss doing these videos anyway. I just love them. It's good to share, isn't it? Right. Okay, someone's after me. So I'm going to pop down now the moth, but to the side... Around about there, I think. Yeah. Doesn't pay to dither, and I was dithering then. Like 
so all right let the ink soak in have a slurp of my coffee not a bad day down here in north kent it's raining now but it's warm and i've had a couple of good days of sunshine so i caught up with all the washing <gasps> oh, that's the worst thing about going on holiday isn't it washing I don't do very much ironing, believe me. I just um, I buy clothes that are drip dry. I'm not doing with all that. Ugh. Oh, ironing is oh terrible. Okay. Right, let's have a look. Gorgeous, absolutely gorgeous. So that's Indra, the moth. And now the words are, again... From Lavinia, of course. And they are believe in magic. And they say those who don't believe in magic will never find it. Again, inking up, gentle tapping, Versafine, Onyx Black, gentle tapping. And then popping that over here. Around about there, I think. Trying to ensure that it's straight. And down and up. That's good. And that's all I'm going to do regarding stamping and stenciling. Just going to add some... Orange, this is a orange sparkle pen from, uh, let's have a look, Uniball, I think this is. Yeah, Uniball Siglio um, Orange Sparkle. And I'm just going to add a bit of sparkle to the head of the beautiful moth. Not right the way across, just highlight the side and over. And then the body as well, but again... Not all of it, just going across towards the middle. Coming down the body. Colour it all in if you want to. I'll probably land up doing that, to be honest. There we go, and then that round there. I'm trying to sort of get a shape to highlight the fact that the body is round or well I suppose it's round isn't it and then we go a bit more down here going to glossy accents this so that will sort of hide any defect in my colouring in skills <laughs> Which, as you know, those of you that follow me, I'm not overly keen on colouring in, but sometimes you have to. To get the best out of your stamps. And for the, for the good look of your artwork. A bit more there. Looks a bit rough around the edges. And maybe, yeah, I think this needs to... I, I knew I would land up filling it all in. You have to, don't you? Yep, up to. And then taking these um, new, Nouveau Crystal Glaze drops, or you can use Glossy Accents, or any of the other sort of transparent glazes that are on the market. I'm just going to making sure there's no bubbles, air bubbles. Don't shake this stuff. It doesn't like it. I've got an air bubble there that's got to go. Come on. Oh, stubborn little devil it is. Hey. Pack it in. <laughs> it doesn't want to pop. Right, 
I don't know how to get rid of that. <laughs> it's just there. It's going clear off. I'm not <laughs> moving. <laughs> okay, let's carry on. Come back to that in a minute. So I'm filling in the rest of the body now. And it's um, self-leveling, as I think I said. And uh, so that's fine. And it will settle down. And it will hide any marks, defects, scratch marks in your colouring in, of which I've got loads, sort of stripy things. Oh, and that air bubble has popped at last. Thank goodness for that. There we are. That looks better already. Uh, it got a bluish tone to it, but it will dry clear. So, I'm done. Just popping that on there. Now, I have got um, a card blank. Just popping that on to give it a little bit of extra strength and height. I'm not going to do anything around the edges of it. I want the stencil to do all the talking and I want it to be quite clean looking and neat. And I think that I've got that. And I had fun making it. I hope that you have a go at this and post it on Facebook and elsewhere just and tag me so that I can see. Thanks ever so much for looking today. I'm off now to... Uh, get ready for the qualifying in the Formula One this weekend or oh, my cup runneth over <clears throat> and I'll be back tomorrow about two-ish. Thanks for looking. Bye for now.